So when we talk about liabilities which are a part of our CMA US syllabus, we'll be talking about few specific types of liabilities. First one is contingencies, then we'll also talk about warranties, then we'll also talk about income tax and we'll talk about bonds and leases okay so these are the topics uh, that we will be covering here uh, some of them may be again when you are doing it for the first time you may find it slightly difficult or challenging now one thing i want to uh, you know ensure every one of you to do is when we do bonds please ensure you have completed the asset part related to investment so whatever you have completed in investment under assets investment in equity securities investment in debt securities and all of that that please ensure you complete uh, you know at least complete the reading and all of that so that the understanding here becomes better okay so here in both in bonds and lease payables we'll be using present value concepts compound interest concept these two concepts we'll be using uh, before this lectures begin i'll also give you uh, you know like i have done for cash flow i'll give you some videos which you can have a look at it so that your conceptual clarity is better right so with this but again you will not be required to do it at a very advanced level so don't worry about you know if complex questions are tested in the examination what will happen you are not required to understand them in too much of detail okay so that is uh, what you have to be uh, mindful of now coming to the first one which talks about contingencies so the first part that talks about contingencies now if you go back and have a look at our definition of liability we said liability there is a present obligation there is a present obligation which is arising out of past events and there is a future outflow right so this is the broad definition of what is a liability so whenever i say there is a liability for example i have occupied a property on rent a month is completed after the month is completed i have to pay rentals so that rent becomes my liability why is it my liability it is my liability because there is a past event i have occupied the property there is a present obligation because i have occupied the property there is an obligation to pay the rent and there is a future outflow of resources future outflow means i have to pay the rental amount i can't say that i will not pay the rent amount of course if i am someone like uh, vijay male or somebody who wants to default that's a different thing but i cannot say i will contractually i have an obligation to pay so something which has happened in past because of which there is a present obligation and that will result in future outflow that is what we call as liability so anything you say interest payable i have used the money in the past i have to pay interest in the future so till the time it is paid it is called to be a liability now contingencies are also what we are discussing here is in with respect to a liability but one important thing that you need to understand is one of the element is missing so just to give you a perspective if i purchased goods i will say i have an account payable of let us say 10000 is there a past event yes purchase is there a present obligation yes i have to pay see due date may be in the future but i have a present obligation currently there is a burden on me and there will be a future outflow so this becomes a liability but if i you know give you another example where i say that one of the element is missing now what could be that case say for example we have apple samsung okay samsung has filed a case on apple saying that you have infringed my patent so patent is an intangible asset that you have understood you have infringed my patent infringe means what you have misused my patent you have used my patent that you are not supposed to use for that they have filed a court case so in the court there is a case going on right now samsung has filed and let us say for example if apple loses if apple loses who will pay amount to whom as compensation 
if Apple loses, who will pay amount to whom as compensation? So, Samsung has filed the case. Samsung has filed the case on Apple, Apple lost the case. So, who will pay the compensation? Apple will have to pay the compensation. Now, today let us say we are looking at this timeline. This is 31st of December. Case is still not decided. Case is still not decided. They have not decided on the case. Now, if the case is not yet decided, if the case is not yet decided, can I say Apple has to pay to Samsung? I cannot say that. Sir, when will I be able to say that? I will be able to say that when the court finally gives a verdict that yes, Apple, you have lost the case or Apple, you have won the case or Samsung, you have lost the case. They have to give a decision. Only when the verdict is given, I can say that amount is payable. So, payment happens only when the court case gets decided. So, whenever we talk about contingency, this is a type of contingency which is one of the most widely used term contingency. Okay. So, contingency is a situation where contingency is a situation where See, contingency, the meaning is uncertain. Okay. So, in our court case example, it is not certain as to who will win the case. So, that is a contingency. right? So, contingency means anything which is uncertain, either an event or a transaction or a situation, whatever you say, uncertain. This uncertainty will be resolved in future. So, because the uncertainty will be resolved in the future, what it means is, as of today, I may not have an obligation. See, when I say it is a present obligation, I am saying I have a burden. But in case of Apple versus Samsung, there is no present obligation. Sir, then what kind of uh, present obligation, uh, what kind of obligation is that? Here, it will be a possible obligation. Now, the differentiating factor is, if it is 50 percent more than 50 percent, it is probable. If it is 50 percent or less, we say it is possible. So, in this scenario, there may be a possible obligation, but there is no present obligation. Hence, I cannot record a liability. Now, when we talk about contingency, which is uncertain, this will be resolved in the future. The outcome can be two. There can be a gain, there can be a loss. There can be a gain, there can be a loss. Okay. Now, here we are talking about loss contingency, meaning to say from Apple's point of view, from Apple's point of view, there is a possible obligation which may come up in the future. There may be a possible obligation which may come up in the future depending on the court case. Now, here in this example, Samsung will not lose anything because Samsung is claiming the amount from Apple. Apple is not claiming amount from Samsung. So, here we will look at Apple and we will say it is not a liability, but it is a contingency. It is a contingency, right? So, a contingency is an existing situation, condition or set of circumstance which involves uncertainty means we do not know the outcome. It may be favorable, it may be unfavorable as to there may be a possible gain. For example, from Samsung's point of view, there is a possible gain. Again, even if it is a contingent gain, you will not recognize because it is not certain or loss contingency that will ultimately be resolved when one or more future events occur or fail to occur. So, if the court case, once the court case is decided, future event occurring and then we will get to know whether we have to pay or not. Now, same thing if you see insurance. Okay. So, let us say here is a one person, he has a car insurance and there is an insurance company, let us say ICICI. Right. Now, ICICI has to pay amount to A if this car meets with an accident. So, if this car meets with an accident, ICICI has to pay amount to A. This is also contingent. You cannot say today ICICI has a liability. What you can see is ICICI will have a liability in the future if at all there is an accident. If the accident does not occur, occur, then there is no liability. 
right so a contingency if you look at it it may be the probability can be 3 probable future events are likely to occur so probable means greater than 50 percent chance possible or reasonably possible less than 50 percent chance less than or equal to 50 percent chance remote very less chance so if i have to just explain it to you during monsoons it is probable that it will rain okay during monsoons it is probable that it will rain so if i have to you know talk in our context in the month of june july august september it is probable that it will rain but in the peak summer in april it is remote means very less chance that it will rain okay so that is how you need to understand remote means very very less chance of uh, you know uh, the event happening or if you are following cricket if it is a match between australia and zimbabwe you would say there is a remote possibility that zimbabwe will win can zimbabwe win yes it can win but 99 percent of the time it will most likely lose as of the current scenario right so there can be three type of uh, you know scenarios now what we need to understand is as far as loss contingency is concerned so whenever we talk about a liability we believe that there is a you know loss that is happening a loss contingency must be accrued when the following two conditions are met now i am again coming back to my example here very important for you to understand in this particular case the outcome is not certain there is no probability that there would be outflow but if there is a loss contingency where we believe that the outflow is probable sir how do we know we know the facts of the case we have discussed with our lawyers and now we believe that most likely we will lose the case so let us say there is 70 percent chance that we will lose the case so if it is probable it is contingent but it is probable that is greater than 50 percent chance that we will have to incur a loss apple is saying we have talked to our lawyers we have spoken with our lawyers and it is 70 percent chance that we will lose the case so there is probable that a liability has been incurred it is probable that a liability has been incurred so greater than 50 percent chance and the amount of the loss can be reasonably estimated so in this particular case the court will decide the amount to be paid but if we can make an estimate of that then so see, see this it is probable plus if i can make an estimate then i will recognize a liability i will not call it contingent i will recognize a liability it is contingent but from the books of account purpose i will record a liability or i will accrue a liability so first scenario whenever there is a loss contingency uncertain event we believe that it is probable greater than 50 percent chance we can make an estimate so you will record a liability similarly on the asset side if an asset has been impaired we will record a contingency now what is the example of asset being impaired very simple example could be your account receivable one of the account receivable has become insolvent or insolvent proceedings are going on insolvent proceedings are going on means somebody has said that this person will should be declared insolvent he does not have money to pay so that proceedings are going on he is not yet declared insolvent when will he declared when will he be declared ins insolvent when the court decides but as of today we know that there is a greater than 50 percent chance that this person will not pay us the amount so we will call it to be a loss contingency and if we can estimate the amount we will record an allowance for bad debt okay so sorry uh, i missed to show the screen so i was just talking about account receivable insolvent proceedings are going on greater than 50 percent chance that he will not pay the amount we will recognize a loss contingency so a loss contingency i am again repeating a loss contingency means there is an uncertain outcome we will incur a loss or we may incur a loss if 
the outcome is probable if the loss is probable greater than 50 percent chance please be mindful the term you have to you refer to it in the question sometimes they may say possible sometimes they may say probable so only if it is probable plus estimate you have to create a loss contingency for either an asset loss or for a liability being created right now sometimes what happens is while estimating you do not know the exact amount you may say between thousand dollars to fifteen hundred dollars is my estimate normally we do this estimate right how much is the cost of let us say or how much is the rental for a particular building building or an office we say twenty thousand to thirty thousand because we do not exactly know what is the most close estimate right so whenever there is a range you have to see what is the best estimate if you can make the best estimate use that estimate sir if you cannot make the best estimate so first the one which has a better estimate you will account with that amount second if no amount within that range appears to be better estimate than any other this basically means between 1000 to 1500 all amounts have equal probability no amount is better than other so in that case you will say up for 1000 you will record a liability and balance 500 you will disclose minimum you will record balance you will disclose right so disclosure of the and apart from that you will also disclose the amount or the range of loss so that the financial statements are not misleading now we say two conditions probable estimate say for example it is not probable means it is either possible it is not probable it is possible so if one of the conditions are not satisfied you cannot accrue or record you cannot pass an entry because you are saying it is not possible or i know it is probable but i cannot make an estimate so if i cannot make an estimate how will i pass an entry in the books of account so in this case also you will not pass any entry so just to summarize this entire discussion whenever there is a loss contingency what you need to check is is it probable can you make an estimate yes yes record is it probable no can you make an estimate yes only disclose means you will not record a liability why because you yourself are saying less than 50 percent chance third situation probable i cannot make an estimate here also you will disclose sir why are we not passing an entry or you need an estimate to pass an entry you need an amount to pass an entry if that amount is not there what is the entry you will pass and then if it is remote means very very less chance one percent chance two percent chance remote cases you will ignore so this is how you handle loss contingency when we say record or accrue we are passing an entry in the books of account okay so just a quick recap once again contingency means it is uncertain it will be decided with some events happening or not happening in the future second it can be a gain contingency means i gain because of the contingency it can be a loss contingency here we are talking about loss contingency if it is probable so if loss contingency is probable and you can make an estimate you will record estimate you will use the best estimate if you cannot make the best estimate minimum amount if you cannot make an estimate you will disclose so one more thing you have to understand is if you cannot make an estimate you will have to disclose if at least one condition is not met but the probability of loss is at least reasonably possible the nature of the contingency must be disclosed if the loss contingency is remote probability remote then they are not disclosed remote means i will not care one percent chance i will not bother about gain contingencies are recognized only when realized so gain contingency means i will gain i have filed a case i know i will win probability but only when the final verdict comes only then i can recognize or I, only then i can pass an entry i cannot recognize again before i become entitled to it so this is basically you are based on the concept of prudence right now one more thing you need to understand just one more example 
let us say there is a company, there is insurance, okay. there is an employee. This employee met with an accident, this employee died. Employee met with an accident, employee died. Okay. Now, the legal heirs of the employee, they filed a case against the company claiming damages. Okay. Now, here this company will have to pay the amount if the legal heirs win. So, for the company, there is a contingent liability. There is a contingent liability or contingency. Contingency, I think that is a better term to use for now. Okay. There is a contingency. Which contingency? Loss contingency. Now, whenever an employee dies, what the company has also done is the company has taken an insurance policy with the insurance company. Now, if at all the company you know loses the case, the company has to pay the amount to the employee as compensation, this insurance company will reimburse that amount to the company or insurance company will settle the amount out of the insurance policy to the company. right? Now, what, what you need to understand is this company has one contingent loss okay? and if it is probable plus you can make an estimate, you will record. This is independent set of transaction. Insurance company will reimburse to the company, this is a contingent gain. And this contingent gain can be recognized only when it is realized or confirmed. So, if the insurance company has not yet confirmed, the company cannot recognize this gain. Please remember, though this gain and this particular loss are offsetting one another, the gain can be recognized only when it is confirmed by the insurance company. You have to look at these as two independent transaction. Contingent liability separately, contingent asset separately, though they are linked to the same transaction. Right. So, again a quick summary, probable, yes, yes, record. If one of this is no, disclose, disclose, remote, ignore completely. That is the summary of the entire discussion we have had so far. Yes, contingent gains are similar to contingent assets and contingent liabilities are similar to contingent uh, losses. One of the very important uh, topics uh, while you you know pass accounting entries and please remember this particular topic will also be important for your essay. So, conceptual understanding and writing the concepts also becomes important for you. Warranty. So, how many months warranty do you get when you buy a mobile phone? 12 months. Generally, you get 12 months warranty. Okay. Uh, phones may you do not get 2 to 3 years of warranty or you can take an extended warranty. Some of other products, electronic items, cars and all of that you get multiple period warranties also. So, say for a moment, you purchased a product from someone, okay, some device and this device comes with a 3 year warranty. The company has sold today at 10,000 dollars and Within 3 years, if there is any defect, the company will either replace the product or the company will repair the product. Now, revenue is fully recognized in year 1. The claim can come in year 1, year 2, year 3. Say for example, the claim came in year 3 and the company had to spend 1000 rupees in repair. Now, see the mismatch. Revenue is recognized in year 1. Expense has come in year 3 and this expense has, is directly linked to the sales because you have sold the product and you have recognized the revenue, but the expense is coming in year 3. So, if you defer or if you account warranty expenses on payment basis, what happens is there is a mismatch. We have a matching concept, right? Revenue has to be matched with the expenses. Expense may come in year 2 also, expense may come in year 3 also, sometimes expense may not come. So, to handle all these scenarios, what we do is we create something called as provision for warranty or liability for warranty. Now, what is the meaning of this? Say for example, 10,000 is the price of the product, we sold 100. So, revenue is 1 million, right? Revenue is 1 million. Now, what the company does is based on its past experience, it estimates 
on an average how many devices will be returned or how much is the expenditure that will be needed for repair purpose because all the devices will not be defective maybe out of all of this 2 percent is defective or 3 percent is defective so they will make an estimate let us say 2 percent is the estimate when 2 percent is the estimate so it will be 20 thousand this is the warranty provision we create a provision for the warranty on an estimate basis right now when I have created this warranty as a provision what I will do is I will debit expenses of warranty twenty thousand I will credit liability for warranty twenty thousand ok. So, I will create an expense and I will credit the liability in the year of sale in the year of sale. Now, suppose subsequently in year 1 there is a warranty expense of rupees uh, dollar 10,000 ok or let me just make a number odd number so that it is easy for us to understand there is a warranty claim of 7,000 ok. Now, when there is a warranty expense of 7,000 in year 1 I will not again say warranty expense to bank what I will say warranty expense whatever is the warranty expense of 7000 I will not say warranty expense to bank why will I not say this because expense I have already created here. So, what I will do I will say liability to bank 7000 7000 if if this is shortfall for example, expense instead of 20,000 expense becomes 27,000. In that case what I will do I will debit liability I have created 20,000 debit expenses 7,000 credit bank 27,000 ok. So, if I have provided only 20,000 but my actual expenditure is 27,000. So, 20,000 from liability I will use 7,000 will be my fresh expense 27,000 is the total outflow. If it is excess provision and we do not need the provision we will reverse the provision right. This is a broad understanding of how warranty provisions are created. What is a warranty? Warranty is a written guarantee of the integrity of the product service we all know that the seller agrees to repair or replace a product, refund all or part of the price, provide additional services depending on the arrangement with the customer. Okay. A warranty that provides a customer assurance that the product will function as expected in accordance with the agreed upon specification is called assurance type warranty. So, the first type of warranty is assurance type warranty. What is the assurance type warranty? we are assuring the customer, we are telling the customer that see customer this product will work as expected for one year. Now, if it does not work as expected in one year, we will either repair the product or we will you know replace the product. Now, another type of warranty is called a service type warranty. Now, what is the service type warranty? Service type warranty if you see For example, if you see you purchase a phone now purchase a phone you get one year warranty. This one year warranty is for what is for defects. Now sometimes what happens is you want to protect yourself from any further damages. So, for example, let us say there is a water damage. So, what the company does is or what the company offers you is water damage will cover you have to buy one year additional warranty. In that case we will cover your water damages as well 
Okay. So, this additional warranty that is given, it is not an assurance warranty. I am not saying product will function as expected. I am saying if you do or make a damage to the product, use this additional warranty and claim the repair part. So, this is more like insurance. We will not call it insurance, but it is more like insurance or sometimes you get AMCs, annual maintenance contract. Of course, those are you know uh, handled separately in accounting terms, but just for example, if there is any defect to the product functioning right apart from the manufacturing defect for example spare part goes bad for that you can take an amc and they will say up to three times we will replace the spare part right these warranties are called service type warranty where you are providing additional service so a warranty which provides additional services to the customer is service type warranty. A warranty which tells the customer that see the product will work as expected is called assurance type warranty. Now assurance type warranty generally a customer does not have the option to purchase a warranty separately. right? So the logic is because the manufacturer is guaranteeing something about the product you do not need to purchase it separately. If there is something which can be purchased separately, add on warranty, additional warranty or let us say original warranty is only for 2 years, but you can extend it to 5 years. So, that extra period which can be purchased separately is called a service type warranty. Okay. So, whenever you buy your phone, they say right extended 1 year warranty, that extra 1 year warranty which you can purchase separately is called service type warranty. Assurance type warranty cannot be purchased separately. Right. Now, the thing is how do we account for it? An assurance type warranty whenever we have, it is not a separate performance obligation in a contract. Now, what does this mean? This means you purchase a phone. When you purchase the phone, you pay 20,000. When you purchase a phone, you pay 20,000. You get the phone plus one year warranty. Now, this one year warranty cannot be separated from the phone, right? So, we will, you know, when you talk about revenue, we say there are obligations like you know in our case for example when we are take when you are taking these classes we have multiple obligations one provide you with the books second provide you with the online access third take live classes right each of these are separate obligations now here when i sell the phone i cannot separate or i will not i cannot say i'll give you one year warranty subsequently okay the phone and this warranty are bundled together and the moment you sell the phone at 20000 you will recognize entire amount as revenue. You will recognize entire amount as revenue. Now, what about this warranty? For this warranty, you will make an estimate of what is the cost. You will make an estimate of what is the cost. So, an assurance type warranty creates a loss contingency, meaning to say, you will say, I have recognized revenue of 20,000 and I will estimate the cost which is a loss contingency. Now, how will I estimate? Let us say 2 percent. So, 2 percent will be my expense that I will provide. Now, you will account for it if the expense is probable greater than 50 percent chance, amount can be estimated. You can estimate it based on your past experience and the amount is material means it is significant. If it is a very small amount, then you will not be accounting for it that way. Right? That is with respect to assurance type warranty. A warranty liability is recorded when revenue is recognized at the time of sale. So, this is what I was explaining to you here. When you make the sale, you will make an estimate of the warranty provision and you will recognize the liability. Now, let us look at this example first and then we will come to the theory part. In year 1, a company began selling a product under a 2 year warranty. So, 2 year is the warranty period. The estimated warranty cost are 3 percent of sales in the year of sale and 5 percent in the following year. Sales and actual warranty payments for year 1 and year 2 are below. Sales 300,000, 500,000, 5,000, 37,000. Now, year 1, year 2. 300, 
thousand five hundred thousand. Now, first we have to see the estimate. Now, what is the estimate? See, they are saying the estimated warranty cost are three percent of sales in the year of sale. So, in the year of sale, year one you will have three percent. In year two, you will have five percent. Here, in year two, you will have three percent, and then you will have. 5%. So, my total warranty for first year, the total warranty expense for the first year is how much? The total warranty expense for the first year is 300,000 into 8 percent. So, warranty provision when I do, I will have to do 300,000 into 8 percent. This I will do in year 1. But sir, we have to pay in year 2 that is an estimate, but the day I made the sale, I know that I have to make an estimate or I have to make a liability for uh, 3 percent and 5 percent that is 8 percent. So, in year 1 you will say 300,000 into 8 percent that is 24,000 this is my liability. Any doubt here? Yes, we combine both year percentages. because. When I make a sale of 300,000, I am telling myself, boss, in next year 3 percent, after that 5 percent, 8 percent is my expected liability. That is an expectation. Okay. Now, the entry for this will be debit warranty expense 24,000 credit warranty liability 24,000. Now, The payments of warranty 5000 and 37000. So, you have paid 5000 in the first year. Now, when you make the payment, you will not again create an expense. I have already created a liability. So, on payment, when you do, you will debit warranty liability 5000, credit bank 5000. Now, ending liability is equal to 24,000 minus 5,000, 19,000. Then in year 2, year 2 liability that you need to create is equal to 500,000 into 8 percent that is equal to 40,000. Then For this, the entry will be debit expense 40,000, credit liability 40,000. Then the question says paid 37,000. So, when you pay debit liability 37,000, credit bank 37,000. Now, what is my ending liability? Ending liability is opening plus current period liability minus payments. So, opening is 19,000, current year liability is 40,000, minus payment is 37,000, right. You can prepare a ledger account also. So, 19 plus 3 is 22,000, right. That is my ending liability. Okay. Now, sometimes what may happen is the question may say first year warranty is no longer required or some amount of warranty is no longer required that also will reduce. For example, if they say 5000 is not needed, sir why 5000 is not needed? Because it is from year 1 and year 1 period has been completed, 2 years period has been completed. So, this minus 5000 also will make it and then you will show it as 17000. Any questions? simple liability account that you need to create over here. Okay. Now, so this we have already considered even if the warranty extend beyond the period of sale, entire liability is for the period is recognized beginning plus expense minus closing that will give you the ending liability important formula please mark it. If warranty payments for the period exceed the liability, excess is recognized as warranty expense. So, that you have already discussed in uh, you know this entry here. But we had passed one entry where we said if it is excess, we will, you know, uh, 
pass the entry for expense. Okay. Now, service type warranty. Whenever we provide service type warranty, it is a separate performance obligation in a contract. So, now one thing very important you have to understand is, let us say same phone you purchased for 20,000 and this comes with a service warranty together. Now, when you have a phone and a service warranty, you will separate them. If it is assurance warranty, you will not separate them because it is bundled, is it, it is a part of the delivery of the phone. Local laws require to give you some amount of warranty. But if it is a service type warranty, like an extended warranty, you have to separate. Now, for example, only the phone costs 20,000, the service warranty costs 5,000. So, if you have to buy the service warranty separately, the supplier, the seller says you have to pay 5000. But because you are buying with the phone, both of these put together, you are getting at 20,000. It happens, right? Sir, if you buy this phone, we will give you one year extended warranty for free. So, here also what they are saying, 20,000 is the phone, 5000 is the service warranty. So, let us say the service warranty is for two years service warranty is for 2 years. This service warranty is not bundled as a part of the phone, it is separate. Now, worth 5000, you got for free. Now, actually if you see, standalone price of phone is 20000, service is 5000. But you paid only how much? 20000 and you got both of them. Now, from the seller point of view, what they have to do is that 20,000, they have to allocate between the phone and the service. They cannot say entire 20,000 is my revenue. So, how do we allocate? You will say, I have collected 20,000 for something which is 25,000 because sum of these two is 25,000. I should have collected 25,000. I have given 5,000 discount. So, 25,000 is the total price, but I have collected only 20,000 into 20,000 means amount collected 20,000 into price of phone divided by total price. So, this if you do 20 into 20 divided by 25, it comes 16. 16,000 I will say is the phone price or selling price of the phone. Another way for you to understand is 25,000 minus 5,000 is the discount. So, net price is 20,000. This 5,000 discount is nothing but 20 percent discount. So, what are we doing? We are saying from the phone 20,000, remove that discount and recognize revenue of only 16,000. Then for service 5,000 into service 20,000 into 5,000 divided by 25,000. This is 4,000. So, you will say I have collected 20,000 out of that 20,000, phone is a performance obligation, phone delivery is my responsibility, 16,000 is my revenue from phone. Service is my separate responsibility, 4,000 is for service. Now, how will we recognize revenue? Year 1, phone 16,000, service 2,000. Sir, why 2,000? Because service is for 2 years period. Year 2, phone 0, service 2000. Like this, you will split the revenue whenever you talk about a service type warranty. I am again recapping this. Whenever you have service type warranty, one condition is it can be separately sold. It has to be separated. So, when there is a service type warranty which can be separated, what you will do? You will separate the phone and the service. For that, you will take the individual prices 20,000, 5,000. Total is 25,000. This 20,000 that you have collected, you will allocate between the phone and the service. 20,000 is for phone, 20,000 uh, 20, into 20 by 25 is for phone, 20 into 5 by 25 is for service. Phone you have delivered, recognize entire revenue. Service warranty 4,000, 2 years period, 2,000 first year, 2,000 second year, that is how you will recognize the revenue. Okay. So, whenever there is a service type warranty, 
a transaction price is allocated to the service type warranty. So, how do we do that? The total transaction price is allocated to the service type warranty and the product sold based on their standalone selling prices. So, next time whenever you get something for free, do not think that the company will not recognize revenue. You will get free service with your car. For example, if you buy a car or if you buy a bike, you get two free service. They will say, for example, 100,000 is car, two free service worth 2000. How much did you pay? You paid only 100,000. This 100,000 you will split between the car and bike and service. Service will be recognized over a period of two free service and this car and bike will be recognized the revenue once you deliver the car or the bike. Revenue from a service type warranty is recognized over time normally on a straight line basis normally. So, if it is a continuous warranty then you will recognize, recognize it over a period of time on straight line basis. Now, if you feel that straight line basis is not appropriate then you can recognize them based on the estimated service cost. Okay. So, always remember the revenue is recognized based on straight line basis. If straight line basis is not the appropriate way, then you will see how much cost will I incur. For example, this give you a perspective, 4000, you may believe that 1 is to 3 is a better ratio, 1 in the first year, 3 in the second year, that is the proportion of cost. So, 1000 of revenue in first year and 3000 of revenue in the second year based on the proportion of cost. Otherwise, you will use SLM basis. Now, let us see the entry. Entry will be debit cash 20,000, credit revenue product 16,000, credit revenue service 2,000 because you can recognize only 2,000 of revenue in the first period. Balance will be advance or liability 2000. Then in the next year, you will say debit liability 2000, credit revenue 2000. Any amount received as advance from the customer is shown as a liability. So, out of 4000, I am saying 2000 service I will provide this year. So, that is my revenue and balance will be liability. Now, normally what happens is this, this part also will be done at year end. So, in that case the entry will be debit cash 20,000, credit product revenue 16,000, credit liability 4,000 because the moment you sell you cannot recognize the revenue. Year end you will say debit liability 2000, credit revenue 2000, year 2 debit liability 2000, credit revenue 2000. So, this is how you will pass the entry and recognize the revenue. So, this 4000 debited here 2000, debited here 2000 becomes 0. right? So, this is how you will account for the revenue. If an assurance type warranty and a service type warranty cannot be separated, if an assurance type warranty and service type warranty cannot be separated, then they are accounted for as a single performance obligation as a service type warranty. So, if you cannot separate, treat them as service type warranty. If you can separate, then service type warranty will be separated, you will get the information in the question. And whenever there is an expense, expense is recorded as and when incurred. Now, in service type warranty, you will not make any estimates. Sir, why are you not making any estimates? Because revenue is being recognized over a period of time. You are not recognizing entire revenue today. In assurance type warranty, because you are recognizing entire revenue today, you will have to estimate the cost and account for it accordingly. So, to summarize, assurance type warranty is a single performance obligation make estimates for liability. If it is service type warranty, separate performance obligation 
revenue recognized by allocating transaction price okay so and expense as incurred right 